Today I'm going to show you how to take a 2D Bruh. logo and turn it into a 3D logo. As a graphic designer, I work primarily in the 2D space, but I like to use 3D and I've always been interested in it, but I didn't know how to really add it. And I don't really have the money to have something like Cinema 4D, but Blender is free and even though I have very minimal experience with it, I've kind of figured a way to make it work for this one specific thing so I can add it into my graphic design. If you'd like some more comprehensive Blender tutorials, I'll link some in my description below. There are a lot of fantastic creators that helped me get to where I am in just the basics, and hopefully you can learn more from there. But let's get into this. So when you first open up Blender, you're gonna get this little prompt, and all you need to do is just click General. What we're gonna do is we're going to do some very basic setup. Not gonna to navigate too much of the ins and outs. There's a lot of great tutorials on how to better navigate but I'm gonna try my best to at least illustrate how I do it using the basic knowledge that I have. So the first thing we wanna do is get rid of this cube. We don't need it. As long as it's selected, you just press delete, boom, it's gone. So now we're gonna do one more thing for the setup and it should be pretty easy. You go to edit, preferences, you get this pop-up and in the little search tab, the search bar, you will get It should pop up as add-ons. If it doesn't, just click on add-ons. As you saw, I just kind of navigated to find it again. Again, this tutorial is coming purely from a beginner's perspective, helping another beginner. You wanna type SVG and make sure that import export scalable vectors graphics 1.1 format is selected. Mine is already selected, but if yours isn't, make sure it is. And once you're done, you can exit out of that. What that does is allows us to import a vector file as a SVG file into here. So you're not having to actually draw out the shape itself. First, I'm gonna start with my, lo my logo, which is very basic, and then I'm gonna show you a little bit more of how I did it with the Kraken, Seattle Kraken logo. So now, how do we bring it in? We go up to File, Import, Scalable Vector Graphics, SVG. I'm gonna to navigate to where it is, boom kind of small so scroll use your scroll wheel to zoom in select it now over here in the top right this is how you can navigate what angle you're looking at the workspace from because you can freely look around the point by holding your mouse wheel and doing this but let's say I don't know exactly where it is notice how it moves it allows you to know where you are so we're gonna press X because this is the direct right now, I want it to be upright before I edit this. So with it still selected, we're gonna press R for rotate. And since we're only looking at it from one perspective, it only moves on one axis, or at least in one direction like this. So we're gonna stand it up upright to the best of our abilities. Click negative Y, so now we're facing it from the front. Same thing, make sure it's selected. If, you're, if not, you can just click and drag. Press G for grab, pretty intuitive and then hit X so you only drag it along the X axis. And then we're gonna center it, and boom, not bad. Now it's not 3D yet, so how do we do that? So again, if you wanna make sure you've got it selected properly, you can click on one of the elements in this panel and then shift click all of them and you'll notice how they're all highlighted now. So with that, you'll notice that some things have changed over on this panel. So what do we do next? We click over here on this green tab, Object Data Properties, and then we open up Geometry. Now, if you ever know what something's called but you don't wanna to click to it, you can go to the search bar. In this, in this case, we're looking for Extrude. So now that we're there, it's highlighted. And what we wanna do is we have to press two buttons because we wanna move everything at the same time and we wanna do so gently. So if I were to just click and drag this, one, it's really quick and it's very sensitive, but it's only one letter, so how do I change the rest of it? I hold Alt so I can change all of them, and I also hold Shift so it's more incremental, or not quite as quick. So Alt, Shift, click, and drag, and boom. We've got a little bit of 3D going on now. It's not much, but it really don't need much. This is a very simple logo. So now what do we wanna do from here? Well. When we add some lighting, 
I want to add a little bit of angle to it because if we were just looking at this straight on and this is how we screenshot it or how we render it, it's not going to look 3D at all. Maybe the lighting will, but there's no 3D effect. So what do we do? Well, how I do it is very simple. Again, just like we started at the beginning, look at one side. It can be right or left. I always pick right. With everything selected, press R to rotate. And we're going to do it again. We're going to tilt it back. Just a nice straight angle. And look at that. From this perspective, there's some angle. Not bad, not bad. Very simple. So what are we going to do from here? Well, you'll notice it's really small. That's because I forgot something that I always do at the beginning, <laughs> which is scaling up. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this back down just to make this easier on ourselves. Zoom out. And now we're going to do with this still selected, press S for scale, and then just drag. And boom, we got a big one. Now, rotate it back again, pressing R from that perspective. And we want to center it. You can always do however you want, but I like to center it from the origin point because this is very simple. G for grab, X for Y axis, boom. Now it's pretty big. I did that a little bit, but this is, this is still helpful. Now, what do we do? How do we go from here? So you have a camera and a light. So the first thing we want to do is the camera. So what I like to do to, to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to face the front. Okay. And instead of trying to exactly move around the camera and worry about panels, we're going to do this really easy way. So now that I'm in the perspective I want, we're going to go to view, align view, and then align view, active camera to view. And now our camera view is this. This is what we're looking at. And if you're not sure about how it looks, you can always, you know, move it around. And then if you're like me and you don't have a numpad, this may be a little difficult. So if you don't have a shortcut, you can do it. You can go to align view or you can go and you can do if <clears throat> if you're like me and you goofed on getting a keyboard that doesn't have a numpad and you don't have this shortcut. If you want to go back to that camera view, you just go to viewpoint and then hit camera. But we know this is obviously not what it is. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and select the camera go back to our camera viewpoint, hit G to grab, and notice how now the camera view is moving, but it's too free flowing. So how do we adjust this? Well, first I just want to go down, up and down. So press Z for Z axis, center it a little bit. That's pretty good. You can scroll to zoom in more. It's a little small. So what we'll do is we'll hit G again and we'll do the Y axis. So press Y and then just kind of pull it in and then just fine tune it to where you want it. So this is the camera view we're looking at. That's not bad. I actually don't want a lot of perspective. This is really simplified, but you do still get that 3D look going on here. So now there's two more things we got to do to make this simple transition from 2D to 3D. And then we'll look at another example. So I'm going to click out and move around. And we're going to go and find our light, which we didn't delete. Now, if you did delete something, you can click on the empty space, press shift a, and you'll get a pop-up and that allows you to pick what you want to add. So in this case, it would be a light and you can choose what kind. Don't worry. You can choose the one you want, but you can change it when the light is selected or camera if you're missing it. So we're going to select our light, maybe go on top, move it around. Bring it in a little closer. We're still not seeing anything. Well, that's because of the view that we're in. So right now, if you look up here at the right, we're in viewport shading. What we want to do is we want to go over here to this one. This is 3D. This is rendered view. Right now, we're in solid. This is just to show us where we're at. But now we're in solid. Ooh, look, there's some lighting there. There's other views as well, like material preview, wires. But we're looking at this one because if we were to go right now and look and see what we're going to see, it's this. And you're like, man, 
that's kind of plain. Now you could leave it like this. Like again, a lot of what I'm gonna do is gonna be in Photoshop, so I mostly just need it to have reflections and shadows and all that. So the, I could I could run with this, but I wanna make my life just a little bit easier. So I wanna change the color. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before where we click on our layer and highlight them all. We're gonna go back, cancel extrude, go back to our panel, we're going to go over here to this ball where it says material properties and this is going to give you a pop-up of the material it's made of a lot of times by default it's very basic stuff and all we need to do go to base color and you can type in a hex but we're going to just do white boom let's take a look at that not bad you've got some shading you can click out if you don't want to see that maybe that's a little too bright okay maybe bring it down a little bit again this is for Photoshop purposes. Notice how there's some pretty dark color shadows there. Like depending on how you, wh where you're looking at it, you're getting some deep contrast. And if you want to really change that and going more into lighting theory, you can grab the light, hit G, and then pick an axis to rotate it, or that's for grabbing. Or you could press R, rotate it on just the Y axis. You can just kind of play around with it but we're gonna keep it as is. Uh, maybe rotate the logo a little bit more, just to be safe. Look at, look at that, that's pretty cool. So now how do we take it from this perspective and save it out? Now, what you wanna do, first things first, go to what looks like a printer icon and you can determine the resolution. I'm not gonna be using this logo, so I just, keep it at my 1920 by 1080 default but you can change that and there's one more important thing you want to do before you render this especially if you're saving this as a transparent because this it looks transparent but there is a background so you don't want to do that so what are we going to do type in film and then hit transparent notice how the background changed and you have that typical transparency grid now it doesn't matter where you're looking because this we're talking about the camera view. Just press F12 to render. Now mine was pretty quick. Depending on how complicated your file is, this could take seconds. I've seen people who have rendered out full animated scenes within Blender and it will take their computer days to render. But something like this, hopefully, even with something a not so powerful computer, should be able to render this pretty quickly. And you have all, you can zoom in, Obviously, this is not a super large image, so this isn't too high quality, but I could always bump that up. But you can see where it's extruded, and it's got some lighting, some dramatic lighting. Let me just go up to Image, Save As, and then just save it where you want it to. You can save it as a PNG for that transparency. So that's pretty cool. That's really basic. But now I wanna show how did I do it with the Kraken logo and what does that scene look like? Cause I went a little bit more in depth with that and there's a lot more theories, but I wanna at least show how I took it into Blender, made it 3D and how I applied it in Photoshop. So the reason why I didn't wanna show this one right away is because there was a lot more moving parts and I wanted to show the basics because a lot of times when I do these, I'm doing it for very basic purposes. And this was more of an experimentation I did. So when you're looking at it, and of course you can change how your panels look. In this case, I've got a 3D view at the same time as looking at my viewport. You'll notice a thing, few things are different. So my light is actually a object. It's a plane that I made bright, that I made it have light shine down on it. And that's the perspective you get. You can kind of look at it here where I extruded it and you'll notice there's different colors like each when I open this SVG each layer is a different color and that's part of why you need an object to be a vector because if it does have lots of layers you this allows you to kind of change the depth of everything so in this case I kept you know, the colors, the the lighter colors and the darker colors, the same extrusion, but the background isn't as is extruded. So that way the shadows from what is extruded kind of 
drops into this. But if I wanted to change that, I could just easily go to this and then extrude. Oop, wrong part. Extrude and then just change it. And obviously it gets lost. Or like in this case, like if it's barely over it, you get this like scratchiness because it's kind of invading on it. Or I could have it be super thin and not get the perspective I want. We're going to put that back and then I'm going to render it so you can see. And notice how this, this is what a render may actually look like if you have it as a larger file, more colors, more lighting. It's going to render it in panels. And there you go. This is the logo that I ended up doing. Again, I didn't change the materials. I did very basic lighting. The glow here is really just from how it was rendered. Um, I went very basic with this because I wanted to open this in Photoshop. And I'll show you how I added that in. But this is how it came out when I was just experimenting with it. And this is the first logo I tried with this theory. And I mean, I, with some very basic lighting adjustments and color adjustments, you can get some really cool stuff out of this. I know this is getting past the blender part, but I wanted to at least very quickly show you how I added everything in. So first things first, I have a underwater scene that I added a little camera raw to. And then I dropped the logo in. And I had actually separately went in and added the glow to it because I was having difficulty having anything like I couldn't get it to work the way I wanted because again, still very much a, a blender novelty, you know, not a uh, novice. So what I did was I went in and I added it myself in Photoshop and then dropped it in here. Then I just went through and added a lot of stuff to make it feel like it's a little bit more in the scene. So a little shine up top added a little bit of the color on top of from this background onto this made the top a little lighter since the bottom was dark photo filter more photo and then some camera raw and curves layer adjustments but this is basically how i took a 3d logo with very minimal experience and you know i added my colors in and everything tweaked it the way i want with lighting only enough to have the 3D effect, and then I exported it as a PNG, used Photoshop to do that, and you can go in Photoshop and add your textures and all that if you feel more comfortable, but you just want a better base. This is a great way to do this, and I I'm pretty proud of this, that this was my first take on this. So I really appreciate y'all coming along and me showing you the basics. Again, I wanted to preface the fact that I'm a beginner because I am truly a beginner at Blender even though I feel really comfortable with what I'm doing now, this took a lot of experimentation and trying to figure it out. And I know there's gonna be a lot of parts that may still be confusing as far as navigating Blender. Even I still have a lot of trouble with it, having even having used it for a few months. So I highly recommend you look up some basics on how to better navigate Blender. But even without those, you can more or less get away with getting into this and just dropping this in. It just takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of lighting theory to kind of get things the way you want it to. But if you want just something super basic to drop into Photoshop, this is a really good way to do that. You know, without having to mess with Photoshop or Illustrator, whoever else has 3D stuff. I, I personally think that this is a really good way to do this because this is a 3D software and it does a really good job. It's got a huge community, lots of stuff out there and it's free. I forgot to start off with this but it's free. I highly recommend you picking up Blender just to try for whatever reason, whether you wanna create objects in the middle of deserts or you wanna create planets or you wanna just make 3D sports logos like I do, Blender's a great tool for that. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you'd like me to do any more Blender stuff or if you'd like me to stream about this or what, what else I can do to help you guys out. Leave it in the comments below. Give me a like if you like the video and uh, I will see y'all in the next one. Cheers.